before the, we adopt the agenda, we uh, learned last weekend of the passing, I guess it was two weekends ago, wasn't it, of uh, uh, Dick Merrick, uh, former mayor of the uh, town of Comox. And it's interesting because uh, not only did he serve the community uh, well back about four years ago, but he also donated this gavel uh, as the retiring mayor in November of 1977. Um, I did talk to or communicate with his son and certainly passed on our condolences to his wife who was residing at Berwick. And, nice. and uh, he was a man who uh, served his country as a, an Air Force uh, pilot and then of course came home or made his home here for many years and served the community. So uh, just a moment of silence and his memory of this. afternoon, that is uh, Mark ha Haven uh, regarding the Harbour Centre Development Variance Permit, so Mark will take the photo. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, well that's right, we do have a late item as well, which we'll uh, consider towards the end of the agenda. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, I've spoken to uh, most of you briefly. I'm Mark Haven. We own 87% of the Harbour Centre. We reside in, I was going to say, sunny Alberta, it's sunnier than here. <laughs> and uh, our main operation for the last 20 years we've been operating uh, Tim Horton stores. We have six of them in Alberta, and we've always been looking to invest on uh, the island. And we found a wonderful place to invest. So I'd, I'd just like to go through what we have. Um, oh, there we go. Um, they've received this already, but the purpose today is to request the consideration for the removal of a setback limitation on the main floor units that we currently have. We keep the same zoning, so the same type of tenants, just requesting that uh, we open the door a little bit more than just to retail people. And the reason is that for the last few years, and we'll show you some more information, we have tried to attract retail tenants without any success, for the last two years in particular with ourselves, and two years prior to that with previous owners. We like to occupy the front streets. Obviously, the benefits are to fill the gap on Beaufort Avenue. It's quite uh, <coughs> discerning to drive down Church Street and see that uh, the vacant spots. The obstacles that we've uh, had, we've had a real estate agent representing us for the last couple of years. But we're not exactly sure why real, real retailers haven't been attracted to us. Main Street is full. There's not much choice apart from ourselves and the mall at the moment. And uh, you'll see that our rates have been favourable for the last couple of years. We've done a lot of things to attract, but uh, regretfully, some comments. I mean, obviously, I'm in the fast food business, so we spoke to people like Starbucks in some way, and they just felt that it wasn't suitable for a, a number of reasons, and part of the reason was uh, access for the public. So that's our beautiful building. We're very pleased to say it's 70% occupied. I'll just go briefly through the floor plan so you've got some indication as to the quality of tenants that we have there. So in yellow, they're the areas that we're requesting for the setback to be adjusted. Currently, no offices are permitted um, apart from 6.5 metres back from the sidewalk. Area in blue is leased. That's leased to a company called ILS. Inside, they've done some beautiful work on uh, improvements, which we've assisted with. And they do learning for all the insurance brokers across the country. They do the, the online learning for them. And since 2005, they've over, had over 1.2 million people do their learning. They relocated there in December of this year. We currently have a workforce between six and eight people working there, and they've built it up for expansion for the future. On the second floor, we have uh, a mixture of tenants in blue are the people that are leasing from us, and uh, Richard DeLuca and John Veal. Uh, on lot 5 own the green area and they also lease from us as well in the blue area where it's in yellow lot 7A that's the only office space that we have available left at the moment uh, just a 
run through the businesses. We all know uh, Toluca Vila, boutique investment company. Agri-Marine, Agri-Marine recently relocated to Comox to the head office from Vancouver to Comox now, so they're in our building. And what they do, if you're unsure, is that instead of people having fishing nets in the ocean where all the feces from the fish hit the floor of the ocean and kill all of the uh, bottom of the ocean and pollute, etc., they create these massive tanks, and these tanks are fish farms. And they've got uh, one such farm at Lois Lake Power River and also in Norway, an international company. They're engineers, so they have engineers, design people, and administration in their office. The other pe people upstairs are Blue Wizard Digital, a very high profile company. Uh, Jason is very well renowned for creating probably the most famous, well, it's beyond me, but one of the most famous games that's uh, happened around. They make online games, and their design inside is really cool. They have uh, created an atmosphere that's quite unique. We can only take a couple of pictures, they didn't want too much exposed. Uh, they enjoy a view over the back of the harbour, towards the marina as well. So these are the three areas that we're having difficulty renting to retailers, as you can see. The type of businesses that we've had interested in the past are the following. The ones that are up there are quite uh, indicative of where the interest has come from. There's even a funeral director. So. Sorry, those are businesses that have expressed interest in, this in the last two years, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, a couple of them did approach town planning office to try to find out if there was any way of getting into the building. There's a couple of limitations, apart from the six and a half metre setback, there's also a limitation on gathering of people. So, for instance, the boat charter company who have um, um, lessons for their, for their people to go out on charters actually can't have a a room full of 12 people in a meeting because the limitation at the moment restricts that. This is our building. This is what we've been doing the last while. If I can commence by just saying that in usual commercial real estate, the second floor or the office space generally is less expensive than the retail space. Retailers on the street front, retailers pay more, more prominent exposure. In our building, on the second floor, we're receiving between $15 and $23.50 per square foot. And in leasing the space up, upstairs out, wasn't that difficult. It took us time to negotiate with them, but it wasn't that difficult to get it. So we're very proud that the rates that we're getting upstairs are particularly high. Just a little bit of history about the rate, because I know there's been a letter of um, uh, informing that we feel that they feel that we haven't been offering the right rates. Before we took over, the rate was $23 a square foot for the main floor. And we know that because there are several companies that were interested. They were the um, Desolation Sound uh, Charters, there was Edward Jones, and there was also uh, uh, the Alberti Project. They were all interested at one stage, and they were told it was $23 a square foot. Just prior to foreclosure, they dropped the rates down considerably, they dropped the rate down to $18 a square foot with the hope and the intention of stopping the foreclosure, which obviously didn't happen. So we purchased the property in February 2016 under foreclosure proceedings. That's how we acquired the balance. Immediately on our takeover, we dropped the rate to $16 per square foot for the street front. And this was done after consideration and discussions with what we'd like to class as local expert groups, seeking their input and advice. Particularly because we're from out of town, we needed to know what was happening with the building. So the three groups that we met with were Colliers Real Estate in Nanaimo, who do lots of real estate for uh, rentals, leases for commercial. And we also spoke with, spoke with NAI and Courtney, who also do commercial real estate. In addition to that, we went to the town planning office and we spoke to town planners. We wanted to find out the true history of the building. It wasn't very pleasant, but we found out the history and we asked for any suggestions, ideas, in order to get the building stimulated again. And one of the suggestions that came straight away from the planning office was for us to meet with the BIA and the uh, Economic Development. So I did meet within a couple of weeks with Sue Wood from the BIA and John Watson from Economic Development to seek out ideas and get any referrals. Uh, John even threw the idea out that 
those two, the BIA and EDE, wanted a presence in Comox and they might even consider moving into our building. Anyway, they said they'd reach out to companies such as Fanny Bay Oysters, <coughs> a possible wine bar operation, and also a local fresh fish supply company. Uh, sadly, we didn't hear back from uh, either of them, and nor did I contact them actually as well, but uh, we gave it to the real estate agent to follow up on any leads. Anyway, after 22 months of offering at $16 per square foot, in uh, winter of last year, we dropped the rates again, we dropped it down to $14.70 per square foot, and we put that in this magazine that everyone's familiar with, and we happen to have the inside page, we give you a copy of the actual advertisement, because we were told that um, a lot of businesses do read this magazine, so we spent some money to try to get some activity there. Further to that, in uh, January of this year, we've seen the signs on the windows that we decided to go to our lowest rate possible. And so we dropped our rates down to $12.70 per square foot for the front retail space. Regretfully, we still have no interest in any retailers taking up any opportunity for leasing the space or any retailers with those of interest. We still offer incentives, it's free rent, and tenant improvement allowance of twenty dollars per square foot, which is uh, normal for this area. Allow me to see what the next slide is. You can see the difference between the, the comparison. So we're just trying to indicate to you that we are competitive, even at sixteen dollars a square foot. We felt we were competitive. As you can see, the mall is twenty six dollars a square foot. This is their current listing that they have on a number of their spaces. And Main Street buildings are generally older with higher operating costs. We can boast in our building, because it's a lead energy efficient property, that our operating costs are only $4.50 per square foot, plus property taxes. With regards to people that are interested, I'd like to take uh, just a couple of moments if I can introduce Sarah McCluskey, who is uh, a local resident who would be interested in moving into the building. Thank you. <coughs> Your Worship, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron McCluskey. I'm currently a financial advisor with Edward Jones. But prior to that, I was serving military for 24 years. I'm retiring as Lieutenant Colonel. I was a fighter pilot. My last job before leaving the military was to run the Air Force's operations in the Middle East for eight months. When my wife Catherine and I were looking around for where we're going to raise our family, uh, we both come from the island. We both come from Nanaimo. My grandparents lived just out by, uh, we call it Lazo Beach when I was a kid. Uh, I can recall seeing my very first voodoo jet uh, when, at Lazo Beach when I was a kid. That space would inform my decision to get into the military. And I proposed to Catherine on that beach in 2002. And then we went off and had lunch at the Black Fin that afternoon. So Comox has always had a very special place for us. What I'm really excited about doing, though, is joining the downtown business community. Um, for the first time next summer, I'm not posted. I don't have to worry about moving, hopefully, ever again. And that's, that's our plan, is to basically put our roots down uh -huh. here and to raise our family. I see my practice as a service to our community, that's how I'm approaching it. And I've also determined that I make an impact on our community to the best that I can at this time. I'm a director on a hospice society. I'm on the board of directors for the swim team for our kids. I put together all the swim meets. I'm a member of the Legion. And I'm working over at the Legion to kind of bring back a little more energy and some youth to join uh, the veterans who are already there from RCMP and the military who are currently serving. I'm a Rotarian, I'm a member of the Comox Club, just across the uh, sidewalk over there. And of course, I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I think what I'm most excited about is coming downtown. And I was very pleased to be introduced to Mark and to go and have a look at his building. I've had my eye on that for a number of years. As a place where I'd like to start and to grow my practice. I look forward to joining the community downtown. I look forward to contributing to the growth of our community, and especially to supporting other business owners uh, in our region. I'm very happy to be here, and I'd just like to thank you for your time this evening, for the opportunity to discuss this. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Aaron. Um, Mark, I don't know if you're just about to conclude. But I am. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll open this up for questions if you're Sure. Yep. If there's any questions from members of council on the delegation. Go ahead, Councilor. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the presentation. Um, as you know, I sit with the BIA, and we've talked about this. Um, with the, the new rates that have just come down, uh, the thought 
is that that in itself will generate interest amongst retailers. And the BIA is asking that perhaps we could look at an 18-month period of time where we try to lease these out at that rate, and, and then it would add to the revitalization that we as a council have been trying to do for, for the, uh, the downtown core. You know, we, we've seen, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, there's another doctor's office, there's another lawyer's office, and, you know, this is an opportunity for us to, to hold on to just a little bit of retail in a strategic, strategically located site that does come down church, leads towards the marina, and, and the building, I believe, was built with a, um, you know, a, a look for the setbacks that would allow retail you know, with the wider sidewalks, full windows, so it, it feeds into that. So, was, would that be something that you would consider? Is is maybe holding off on this, coming coming back in a year, year and a half, and you know, if that doesn't happen, then you know, no harm, no foul with that. It's our, our position without selling blase or anything. This isn't our prime income. Our prime income is Tim Hortons and yeah. lots of coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, the eighteen-month window. It's really up to council. That would mean that those places have been empty for six years. Um, I, I think it's a bit of a, um, I wouldn't say an eyesore, but disappointing to think that we can't attract people. And one of the things that we thought about, and I'm in a very inexpensive business, and I've always, always been in for turnover, and I'm surprised that we were able, unable to garner any interest at 16 whether it's $12.50 or $16, I don't think it's a big difference. The areas are around 1,000 square feet, and for that 3,000, it will be $3,000 a year less. With all our other tenants we negotiate, we have commercial buildings elsewhere in Alberta and Victoria, and the posted rates are always negotiable, so the 18-month window doesn't affect us financially. It's I find it embarrassing for my ego to drive down there and see that there's no interest. And that would mean that those places would be empty for six years yeah. in total. Yeah, and, and, and I, I agree. But now we finally have an owner of the building who seems to, to care about the building, okay. seems to care about the community, and has lowered the rates. I, I think that in itself would lead to to more interest than the, the previous six years. With many of us didn't know who the owner was or they were going bankrupt or however, how that worked. But now we have somebody in here who's, who cares about the building, has it, most of them rented. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's a selling point right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've tried that for two years. So. Mm -hmm. uh, if I would say that no one's coming because of our stubbornness or inadequacy mm -hmm. to uh, not reduced rates, it's not because of that. But I, I understand yeah. what you're But the, the reduced rates were just recent, though, right? Like, I think the current came out, what, last month or this month? That's the December. lowest rate. So, yeah. you know, that itself should give a little bit more time. But well, thank you, though. No, I, I do. But again, it's only $3,000 a year difference. Mm -hmm. $3 a square foot, 1,000 square feet. Yeah. And if any retailer was previously interested, I think they still would have asked us. Mm -hmm. And just, I'm oh, sorry, any further? Are there maybe other questions for the council? No, go ahead. No, and just on the, on the final thing, it's my family. Uh, my son is serving in the military overseas at the moment. He's in search and rescue, and my daughter is a, uh, a rancher in Alberta. Both love snowboarding, golf, and sailing, so it's the attraction of Comox. So, well, welcome again to our community, and thank you thank for your presentation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll deal with that matter shortly in, as the meeting agenda progresses. Uh, and just a reminder, we do have one late item that we'll be discussing regarding the grant funding uh, letter of support. Uh, we'll deal with that under late items after correspondence. So uh, now we would uh, entertain a motion to approve the regular council meeting minutes of February 7th. Second. On approval. Questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. We have the management report for receipt. At uh, I'll be seeing all those in favor. Any questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Swift? That's my question every time. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have an update on the storm water management plan? Yes. The, <coughs> the report is uh, essentially complete. It is now being referred to the agrologist 
and biologist for stamping as well as certification from the engineer before formal submission to the town we estimate in about a month's time. I would just like to add a, a footnote, i.e. our organic waste. At our last CSWM meeting, it was determined that we still have a surplus of our compost. Up until a few months ago, uh, Comox and Cumberland were able to use it because they, of course, contributed to the cost. And then, because there was a surplus, we opened it up to other municipalities. But still we have a surplus, and so at our last meeting it was determined that we would sell to the public through an auction process, 10 yards at a minimum of 50 yards, and also by amending bylaw 170, we would establish a sale price for the public at $10 a cubic yard. So that's good change. Okay, thanks for that. Anything else? Go ahead. No, I just a quick couple of things. I'm just wondering on the Northeast Storm, um, how this is all going to affect airport parking? I've had my uh, my uh, monthly call from the airport commission, wondering what we can do for parking, and will we be ready for December of what is it, 2018? <coughs> yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if, if there's any chance of that. And of course, we've created a bit of a buzz with the uh, cannabis research lab out there as to some industrial growth out in that area. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'd be a place for a Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, it's doubtful that uh, the airport commission will uh, be in a position to complete the permanent parking area that they want uh, by Christmas of 2018. They had done some work on potentially creating some temporary parking, which still is on the table, and again, it would be temporary parking, but uh, they have made, or had made for Christmas 2017 some arrangements with uh, CFB Comox for parking adjacent to the arena on a temporary basis. So there are still some alternatives, but I wouldn't anticipate that construction would be complete on the parking area by Christmas of 2018. The permanent yeah. parking area. Okay. Okay. Because that, that whole project requires subdivision. Uh, it's a little more involved. Yeah, right, right. And how about some of the industrial? Like, are we looking at sometime next year before people could start getting going on some of the industrial? You know, assuming everything goes. Yes, I, I would. I would say with a high level of confidence uh, at this stage that you know, both from the residential development perspective, you're looking at uh, spring of 2019 when uh, they'll be breaking ground. Okay. And the other one was our wayfinding sign. Is, I, I note every time, and I don't bring it up, but it says we are pre a presentation in the near future. Uh, how near are we? <laughs> well, one of the key players in that is our park superintendent, who's currently away on vacation. Uh, upon his return early March, uh, we'll reinitiate that one, and so I would, I would anticipate something in about April. Okay. Time frame for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, anything else? That was my question. All right, thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to the uh, New business item, which is the development variance permit uh, regarding 1829 Wilford Avenue, for which we have the delegation. I'll move the recommendation. Second. Uh, the recommendation is that the permit be issued. So it's been moved and seconded. Open for discussion. Councilor Yes, I would. Um, I would like to ask council to uh, to consider giving this an 18 month period of time, as I stated uh, to uh, to the owner of the building. Um, the BIA's position is that uh, this is a strategic building that um, does lead down to the waterfront. It is good for the retail. Just hang on a second. Yeah. You want to make that as a... Uh, a friendly, a, too. Well, a, there is an alternate resolution here, uh, an amendment, if you will, mm -hmm. that, that we tape the, the motion of the table to the first council meeting in September. Yeah. Yeah, and then prior to notifying update and so on. So is that, you want to make that as an amendment? Yes, I would like to make that as an amendment. Okay, so and before you discuss it, yeah. is there a second for that? Oh, no. For that amendment. I'll second it for the discussion. Suggest an amendment. 
Okay, well, <laughs> well <laughs> we, we, we may be able to do that. We'll see. But uh, allow Councillor Arnott now that's been moved and seconded yeah, to yeah. discuss the amendment. Yeah, thank you. He can have the say. Okay. Um, we did get a late item from um, Bridget and Luca. Well, a letter of course one says. Yeah, and I'm not sure if all the councils had an opportunity to read it. And so if I could quickly just, I've, I've taken a, a few points here that I think are important. It's, it's a two-page that uh, these three units were specifically earmarked for retail use and designed by the architect to complement the needs of retailers. Building attributes like extra-wide sidewalks, suspended glass awnings, and large exterior windows were included. The goal was to see such things as inventory on display for purchase, rental, and even perhaps outdoor seating for guests of establishments serving food and beverages. These are exactly the type of street frontages that are recommended to city designers who are looking to create vibrant, friendly, people-oriented community. The Harbour Centre has an opportunity to fulfill these goals and to do so on a high-profile artery in downtown Comox. And it goes on to explain what we talked about with the the, the new uh, lower lease rates and that uh, they would just like to have an opportunity for those uh, with you know, um, a solid new owner, um, um, the, the newer rates, and that, that in itself may generate some, uh, some interest. And uh, I, think, I think it does feed into what we've been trying to do as a council here for downtown revitalization, for our waterfront revitalization. We've got some, um, some things happening down there. This building sits on a pathway, a public pathway, that takes us down to the waterfront. I think give it one more opportunity at these lower rates with the new owner and, uh, and see where it goes. And if not, then we'll be back here in a year or so and uh, we'll discuss it again. Might be back. Positive things. All right. Any further discussion on that amendment, uh, Councillor McKinnon? Uh, you wish to speak to that, or a further amendment, perhaps? Well, I have an opportunity to make my amendment now. Yes, so you can give it a shot. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, to the owner, I want to uh, thank thank him for his presentation and a very thoughtful presentation, and uh, his manner is most appreciated. And uh, I think uh, we're lucky to have this gentleman come to our community with his family. Uh, the intention of council when we uh, initially went to this uh, uh, this option was to to uh, to develop our, our ground floor businesses here, and and, uh, and I think we shouldn't lose sight of that. I think that was with very good intentions. Uh, I appreciate the report that was given by our our uh, guest here today, uh, and that how the prices. Uh, um, initially, uh, from initial pricing, has come down, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, that it's now set at something that uh, that would be considered by some retail businesses. At least I'd like to think so. Uh, my suggestion to to uh, go halfway and compromise, perhaps, is to uh, suggest an amendment that would change it from 18 months to 12 months. So that's one year from now, and give it one last uh, uh, opportunity to see if we can get retail. Um, in, for 12 months as opposed to 18 months, and I believe I need a seconder for that to, to be so considered. Instead of September 2019, you'd be talking March 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a seconder for that further amendment? I'll second that. Okay, so on that amendment, and strictly as to the uh, time frame, um, we can have a discussion, and if it passes, then that would amend Councillor Harnott's amendment to reflect that date. So is there any discussion on the dates? So we're simply talking about the dates currently? At this point, yeah. doesn't mean the rest of the motion can't be debated at, at some point, but strictly speaking on that amendment. Well, just on the just on that. We get back to the original? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can I amend that amendment till tomorrow? <laughs> rather than <laughs> well, a year from to now? Well, tomorrow would be uh, killing the, uh, the amendment thing. So we would get to that point there, but right now we're just dealing with March 2019 versus September 2019. That's the only item up for discussion right now. Yes. Well, <laughs> uh, <casino. laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, I, 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 I heard both sides, and I think there's some persuasive arguments on both sides. And uh, I could see six months, mm -hmm. and we'll still be uh, the council here, so we are passing it on for someone else to deal with. And that does give a length of time to test the market. I, 
do feel that the owner is sincere and that uh, he is doing everything he can to, to lease the building and does not wish to see it empty as we also do not wish to see it empty. And I'm very impressed by the photos of the inside and, and really it's employment for people here, so I'd like to see it happen. So I could see supporting six months, but I could well, That would be it. September 2018. Yes. So you would be September or Well, August. I'm just going to yeah. say that because we're in February now. So much. Yeah. Yeah, September the 1st. So it would be until the first council meeting in September 2018 is what you would say? Yes. So do you wish to make that as a further amendment? Yes. Okay. Indeed. Is there a seconder for that? Well, this is a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Because I'd okay. rather have six months than any of the other options, but I don't like six months either. Well, so you can discuss it, but we need to fix a uh, time frame here is what we're talking about. Okay, I'll second the six month thing. Okay, so September 2018 has been moved and seconded. Now, could you just go over how this is going to work? Because okay. I still want to get back to the if original you, motion that yeah, I Yeah, you will, but uh, <laughs> we're fixing the, the time frame here. So, discussion on September 2018. Any further questions on that? Who's in favor of that? What was in favor of on September, September 2018? So, so that on that amendment, that's all we're talking about. We're not so talking about the whole thing. Okay, so that's six months from. Yeah, we're saying yeah. until the tabled until the first council meeting in September 2018. The original motion was September 2019. Okay, and then just so I'm 100% clear yeah. here, we're going to vote on that, then we're going to talk about the motion as amended. Then the motion as amended, and at that, that time we can change it back to the original if we choose to. Or whatever, yeah, whatever it is, or time, or whatever. Or go back to the original. Go back, well, that's, that's yeah. what I wanted to do. We're trying to get <laughs> to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm trying to cover all bases. <laughs> This motion passes at September 2018, then Councillor uh, McKinnon's motion is no longer relevant, and then but we would substitute that into your motion, and then we would debate whether or not we're going to table it at all. Right? But I guess if this one fails, then it's... We go back to Councillor McKinnon for a vote on his. We haven't voted on his yet. Tricky, tricky. Okay, so September 2018, all those in favour? Uh, those opposed? Okay, I need to see more. <laughs> 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 oh my God. No, you cannot abstain. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so abstain, you're deemed to be in favor. <laughs> so, a show of hands is always preferred. Okay. Those well, in favor of September 2018. Can we hear what the motion is today? Yeah. I think we can well, hear what it is. Well, it would be, and this is not, the motion is to replace the, uh, the September 2018. The amendment, sorry, is displaced. Uh, we replace the word September 2019 with September 2018 in the motion that uh, Councillor, or the mo amendment that Councillor Arnott has tabled, mm -hmm. has, has moved and seconded. So we haven't decided on whether it's going to be tabled and at then, all. And then we'll debate that yes. after we decide the six months of February 18th. That's right. Okay. So I, if, if I can make a quick comment before we vote, is that um, the question is then, is, is six months or a year enough time right. for, for marketing right. uh, this retail space? And uh, I, I guess we should give that some thought and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, as well and consider. Right. Yeah. So at this point, it's been moved to second for six months up until September 2018. And are you ready for the question on that amendment? Seeing that you seem to be. Uh, all those in favor of that? I guess. Those opposed? This is for six months. Yes, you're opposed to that. So that amendment passes. So we go back to the motion. Um, now I'd like to amend the motion back to the original no, motion. No, no. <laughs> you'll have to defeat uh, the uh, amendment. So the amendment would read at this time, and it's been moved and seconded and amended to read development variance permit application DVP 1710 be tabled until the first council meeting in September 2018. And that prior to re notifying the public and council will be considering 1710, the applicant would provide. An update on the outcome of the further marketing of the currently vacant commercial units. So that's uh, the motion uh, and for six months as opposed to 18. And yes, go ahead. So now we can debate the merits that, of the motion. Of that amendment, yes. Okay. So I think that there's other reasons why this building isn't renting out other than just the price. I think that they've actually gone through the correct steps as far as marketing to try and find the market. They have not found the, the market as it is currently zoned. I think parking is an issue down there if I'm a reta retailer. Uh, I've often looked at that building and thought that it's not like the down it's not like the main street of downtown, which is really a good retail center, but I've always viewed that as being somewhere a little more obscure and a little harder to deal with as a retail 
place. And I guess I would look down Beaufort Avenue to see that I don't know of any other retailers on Beaufort other than a coffee shop. And of course, you're not going to put another coffee shop right across from the one you've already got. Um, I think the only thing worse than having, um, you know, if, if you want to look at it from what we're trying to do here, we've given it plenty of time um, trying to find retailers. Worse than not finding retailers is dead empty. And I think that that building's gotten a bit of a stigma to it because of that. And so I would propose that we go back to the original motion, allow him to try and lease this out um, as per the um, planner's recommendation. Is your opposing Councillor Arnott's amendment? Aye. Okay. Comment, please. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say for such a young building, and it is relatively speaking to the other buildings in our town, 1829 Beaufort has had quite a history, dating back to 2004. Mm -hmm. There's been a great deal of interest and many, many hours of discussion on this land and this building, starting with the Advisory Planning Commission, and of course many staff hours, councillors in the past, and of course our, the people in our town. And all because, all of this discussion, and all these hours, and all these many years, is because we've all wanted the very best for this building, and as a result it would be the very best for our town which, sadly, has resulted in a glaring vacancy, instead of the vibrancy that we were all hoping for. To finally see ground floor presence at 1829 Beaufort Avenue would send a loud, positive message to our community, one that is long overdue. And if approving the variance is what it takes to make this happen, then I say it's about time. Right. So you'll be speaking in opposition to the table motion. Yes, I am. Okay. Any further? Go ahead, Councillor. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, we talked about parking, but one of the big things that we talked about around this this council table is the walkable community. And you know, we we all agree that the days of having a parking spot right in front of your store are long gone, and and there is ample parking around. Um, again, this the way this building is located. The way it was built and designed, it it, it leads to retail, and I, I think six months is a is a good compromise. You know that we can let this let this go and, and see what happens. If not, you know then then the, the variance is allowed. Um, other than that, I'm just repeating myself. All right, thank you. <laughs> 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 Pam 
Mountain of the Comas Archives and Museum Society. I thank you for your support. Letter. Move for seat. Second. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Nice to see the update and the activity that they've had over the last year and the upcoming future on uh, prominent women of Comox and contributions made to the community for 2018. So look forward to that. Anything else you wish to add, Councillor Price? Uh, just that um, I can't remember if it's written in here, but there will be an opening of that exhibit coming up in March, of which there will be invitations sent okay. out. Is so that March 1st, maybe? Um, or is that something else? Hmm. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, that's for the digital mapping. Yes, uh, well, for both the digital mapping okay. and the. Uh, uh, so that's March 1st, that's what, 10 days from now. Not even. Okay. The International Women's Day. Okay. Well, you'll let us know when we get Yes. Okay. Yes. Just, just a quick comment, please. I had the pleasure of listening to Pam's presentation on the stair at the Seniors Center, mm -hmm. and it was very, very well received. And she obviously is doing a service for our town as, as well as for the museum. It was great. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So we've moved to receive that. And now we have uh, correspondence from Emma Warren, who's actually here tonight. the eight. March the 8th, thank you. Okay. Uh, time and details of the talk. Uh, we have a, a letter or item of correspondence here from Emma Lauren, who's here in attendance tonight with uh, her father, James. And thank you for being here, Emma. Uh, so, a motion to receive the letter. And uh, a motion to receive. All those in favor? Motion is carried. So, the letter is uh, looking at uh, the possibility of having a basketball court at the marina. So I'm going to turn this over to Councillor McKinnon because he knows all about basketball courts. <laughs> well, he's not allowed to play on them anymore, apparently. Well, first to his wife. Uh, I'll just make a quick comment that it, it's pretty encouraging to have a young person write a letter to Council and, and be so strong in her convictions that we need a court. Uh, whether that, uh, that is the right location for the court, I'm not sure, and I think that's something we should uh, uh, pass on to staff, the Recreation Department, for consideration. Okay. Uh, there's pros and cons to any site for a court, but uh, she took the time to do this. I think that's uh, that's uh, really encouraging and, and nice. Wherever the court may be, I would like to move that there be a warning sign for those that are 65 years and older <laughs> basketball that you are responsible for your own actions and are not covered by the town. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so would you like to make a motion to refer to staff then? I would. Thank you. Sir. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, yes. Yeah, did, was there, is there still a basketball court by the park? Is it Stevenson Park? No, well, that was replaced by the outdoor fitness yeah, park. Yeah, it was. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there was one there. Because we had one there for the longest time. And, yeah. and of course, we do have one at the uh, Gagliardi Academy that was. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, in our, at, at the town. Smaller height. Yeah, it's not regulation height. Perhaps what, since we were referring it to staff, we could look at the possibilities of other locations in the well, downtown. Yeah, no, you right. know, yeah. in that park, maybe yeah. away from that condo. Sure. Stevenson Park. Yeah, correct. Yeah, staff would yeah. give us all the options. For <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would just like to um, comment that um, that is one of the things I heard about Marina Park. It's great for little ones. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if we can appeal to a broader range of ages. So um, I'd be really interested in hearing from the staff and seeing okay. what they can All right. Okay, so on a motion to refer, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, Emma. We'll uh, hear back from staff probably in the next month or two, I think, once our parks director gets back home. And yep. Staff can get to that. So we'll thank you. We'll keep you advised. Ask James how we did procedurally here tonight. That was a good one. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so uh, we'll get back to you and let you know what the outcome is. We'll let you know when it's next on the agenda, too, so if you want to come All right, so we'll move on to correspondence from the Royal Canadian Naval Association uh, regarding the upcoming May 6th Battle of the Atlantic. All right, and the usual provisions for that. Yes. So it's live pass, we have to do a letter, so uh, motion to that effect. Uh, all those in favor? Motion is carried. And the staff will deal with that. And then I believe the next item corresponds, lots of interest in the marina, obviously. Uh, this is regarding uh, boat launch uh, issues. Um, this arises out of a letter of sent to us last year by the same author. <coughs> And of course, did result in some uh, coverage. And of course, he's looking for, uh, for consideration. So, a motion to receive the letter. Move receive. Second. So, 
questions in favor? Motion's carried. And I did email them back and just said we'd be talking about it tonight. And if council does wish to consider this, they would obviously ask for a staff report and we'd have to figure out um, what the costs would be and how they would be uh, allocated and so on and so forth. So um, council has its uh, purview to just receive it or to refer it to staff for a report or any other kind of procedure. That's uh, right. I would say referring it to staff, and okay. uh, we've raised some good points. They may not be workable, but it's so. What would you like staff to comment on? I guess is the um, and just how it can. I, what I gather is that it can get into a bottleneck there, and if there's any ways that we can mitigate that. Yeah. I know we've discussed it here at the table before, but uh, are you interested in staff looking at the cost of hiring somebody to uh, monitor and supervise, or is that something you don't want to consider? Um, it's, it's always good to go with the cost, yes. Councilor Yeah, um, with that, I, I'm not so sure how good it would be to have a student down there marshalling vehicles with, with people. It, it, it can get pretty um, busy down there, but you know that's something we can leave to staff. But my question is, uh, it was either in this or one of the other uh, pieces of correspondence we had was with the, the boat ramp and then how the dock goes straight. Mm -hmm. um, and how it should go tight to the right, that would go parallel to the walkway around that. We don't have our water lease for that, I don't think. So that, that was going to be my question. Um, I understand that there is going to be a period of time that we're going to have to redo that uh, that breakwater or that uh, that shoring up there, uh, Richard, is that correct? Yes. Is that something that we could look at when that time comes? Because it wouldn't make sense to do that now, but when the time comes that we could bring that or the, uh, the boat ramp to the right, uh, the, the walkway, yeah. dock part. I, I think it, well, it may involve a tenure issue as well, but uh, the staff could report that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that would definitely allow people uh, to, to sit there with their boats while people are coming sure. and going and allow them a little bit more. Okay, well, we'll get a staff report uh, again over the next month or two here. Um, if there's any uh, cost associated with it, of course, we'd have to factor that into any budget issues for this year if that was going to happen this year. Well, I'm wondering about uh, volunteers to, to do this kind of thing, because I know it gets a little bit of a conundrum down there with, with all the boats and that to hire someone is an expense. Mm -hmm. I don't know that the boaters would want to take on that expense uh, themselves to do it, but I don't know if there's any opportunity for, we've got lots of retired people in our community that might be looking for something to do. I mean, you can't play basketball anymore, so... <laughs> well, you get into all sorts of issues. Yeah, uh, of course. You get union issues, you have uh, liability issues. Um, yes, volunteers can serve in certain capacities, but if you look at, and it's not quite the same, but if you look at the auxiliary RCMP program, you know, they have to scale that back because of mm -hmm. some of those concerns. Not that you'd anticipate that kind of issue at a boat ramp, unless it's really busy. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you ever sit on the edge water? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to my mind, it's unfortunate that uh, this has to be considered because uh, boat ramps, by their nature, are designed to be self-regulated. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I said to Mr. Levesque in my email, I said, you know, this is a level of service thing. And is the town, you know, is this something that we want to increase the level of service on and at what cost and who's going to pay that cost? Maybe we can get the regional district to help us uh, no, we don't pay for your uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll create a function. <laughs> they'll, they'll create a service and hire a manager. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, you know what the service would be. Yeah. Yeah. Your Worship, yes. uh, uh, if staff could be asked to uh, report back what other communities with similar size marinas, uh, if they have any experience uh, uh, with this and, and uh, uh, Perhaps you, uh, share with us a few models elsewhere that, that might. Yeah, that's uh, possible. I mean, the more research required, the longer the re mm -hmm. time the yeah. report will come in. So, uh, I mean, I guess, uh, again, subject to work requirements, uh, staff have already uh, to get a report back as comprehensive as possible that may not cover all the bases. Yeah. I, I think Al gave us a report, and I'm trying to, I was trying to remember what it was about the actual ramp itself, and it seems to me that's the bottleneck is. Mm -hmm. There, but, but there was all sorts of issues with doing some of these things, and he's probably still got the old report. I just I couldn't recall. Yeah, I imagine he'll be asked to refresh some of that. Yeah. Anything else you we need direction on? Nope, that's good. Okay, so motion to refer to staff for a report. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Again, over the next month, if you hope to get that back. Voting season, of course, will be underway soon. Um, 
So that's it for correspondence, I believe. We have a late item, which is the grant funding to address homelessness. Hopefully, we're going to have a copy of that. Um, and this, uh, maybe I'll just turn over from the CAO uh, to the CAO or to the Deputy Administrator to explain why we're being asked to consider this. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, <coughs> a few meetings ago, the Council did pass a letter supporting the request uh, of the town's $30,000 commitment to the Coalition to End Homelessness uh, in order so that the, the funds could actually be leveraged against BC Housing who would match those funds. Uh, it's all very worthwhile. But the, the motion that we had structured before specifically mentioned the Transition Society as the benefiting group. And for the purposes of, of what they're trying to accomplish, we just want to make that broader to uh, consider it as the Comox Valley Coalition to End Homelessness. So it's just a minor change in terms of the, the organization. The intent of, of what we had uh, suggested and what Council passed prior is, is still intact. It's, but because it was a resolution, we did want to bring it back and help Council kind of, uh, rescind, rescind that first resolution and, and pass this new one. And uh, even with this, with this new one, uh, I'd like to suggest just a minor amendment to the Council. Yeah, because they're looking for more of a multi-year commitment. Yeah. All right, so I guess the first thing in order would be to rescind the resolution 2018-12. Okay, I'll move that. Second. 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 All those in favor? Motion to take. And that the new motion would be what? See, what are you suggesting? It would be as worded in, in uh, the resolution number two, uh, except in the second line where it says uh, Vancouver Island Regional Director of BC Housing confirming the town's contribution, and then insert subject to council approval. Of thirty thousand per year from okay. the agency. Okay, I'll move that. Yeah, so move the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Motion is carried. All right. We'll get that uh, letter sent off. Move this week. Thank you. Okay. So um, any other no more delegations? Uh, reports from members of council. So we'll start with council Swift. Okay. Um, Okay, I attended the um, regular Kilberg board meeting, and I'd just like to uh, remind everyone that um, you can get your membership online, and they've got a new um, site, so you can have it as a recurring um, membership. It gets billed automatically to your visa. You <laughs> 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 should take the stress and strain off joining such a fabulous organization. Um, and their AGM is March 24th at 2 o'clock at the Lodge, if you would like to attend. Uh, I attended the um, waste, solid waste management meeting and the hospital meeting. And we passed the budget, although not unanimously. Um, and then uh, we did have a, the sad passing of the mayor of Tassins. Mm. Yeah. And so that was, uh, she will be sorely missed. She was a great. She was good. Yeah, she was. And that's my report. And the search commission. Oh, and the search commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I forget that. I'll let you spread. Council Bryce, you're up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I attended the search commission also. And uh, we did move that we um, uh, would enter into a liquid waste management uh, planning process uh, for um, looking at the whole system, uh, but with the ability to um, bring forward uh, the conveyance part of it and any capacity issues at the pump stations uh, at an earlier point. because. Liquid waste management planning can be uh, can take quite a long time. That's right? its nature. Uh, it has the advantage that uh, it's supported by senior levels of government and uh, is more likely to be grant funded. Um, but it, it is a, a process that's laid down and um, and it, it does take time. So we will be um, having terms of reference brought to us uh, next. Uh, month for that process. <coughs> it was also suggested and um, it will come up at the next meeting looking at expanding the area that, uh, uh, that the system uh, could be um, uh, could service. 
or inviting other players because of the sad sewer issues. Um, but getting back to the conveyance, because um, as you all know, in Tomox we have been very much uh, intent on getting the Wilmar Bluff situation resolved before we actually have uh, a catastrophic event out there. And uh, going through this process, uh, it is um, anticipated that we could be, well, that we would be in uh, next year looking at voter assent on um, borrowing uh, to deal with that, that part of it. And uh, we also uh, had the Sports Commission, I attended the Sports Commission, and we are going to keep the level of service that we had um, last year. It was reported, reported back that uh, the proposal, because of increasing costs due to the need for more lifeguards and because of the ammonia um, uh, leak that is so early and the resulting uh, uh, new regulations coming out of it, along with other factors that to keep the requisitions uh, stable, we would have had to cut back. But because of the um, surplus that has um, uh, now been uh, fully, we, have, we actually have a surplus of 438,000, so we are keeping the requisitions stable and the service as it was uh, last year. And we also had a uh, committee of the whole to attend it. Councillor McKinnon. That's just two quick items uh, here. So I was last week able to attend the First Nations Women's March uh, in memory of, uh, of a missing Aboriginal woman at the Sims uh, Memorial Park. And secondly, with Councillor Ken Grant, uh, we attended a fundraiser for Pomox Valley athletes. Uh, and happy to say one of them won a gold medal, Cassie Sharp. So yeah. um, very. Uh, very proud of our athletes who represented the Comox Valley. That's my report. Thanks, Councillor Arna. Yeah, uh, just a couple of things. I had a meeting with um, the Rocky Mountain Cafe owner, David Gann, about some potentially new businesses downtown, which uh, could lead to some uh, some improvements. That sounds good. The uh, last night with Mayor Ives and uh, Councillor Swift went to the new Rotary uh, Charter Party. There's a new Rotary Club in town, the Comox Valley Rotary Club, which uh, Mayor Ives and I are charter members of now. And uh, so it's good. It's, uh, it's a new type of Rotary Club. It's a lot of young people um, where when I was in the Rotary Club before, I was the uh, youngest person. Now I'm the oldest person at this one. And uh, it's good to see a bunch of young people involved and engaged in a new rotary so. Well, I, uh, on this side or that side? Do you want to go simultaneously? I'll do one, you do one, you want to? <laughs> so I attended the uh, sewer meeting, I think that's been reported out fairly well. Um, sports commission meeting, so that's been reported out fairly well too. I guess one thing that's coming up in that is that uh, over the next year we'll be doing an asset analysis to see what we've got and try and weave that into the budget. Um, the surplus that they had this year was about 360000 plus they retired some debt, which is what got us to where we are, and they're assuming that we'll, we'll be able to hit those marks with that uh, kind of revenue over the, over the next years too. But as we do an asset evaluation, um, you know, we've got some aging buildings there that need some attention, so we'll see where that all goes. And Committee of the Whole, which I think has been reported out on well too, so I will leave it at that. Councilor Mark Grant. Thank you. Um, I was invited to meet with our Brooklyn Creek Watershed people, and they did a wonderful job of educating me, and I'm continuing to learn more about it. They were, they were very informative. Also, I attended the Green Business Certification Info Session. I have some some of the sheets. If anyone's interesting, interested, there's a, there's a whole new world that's unfolding, and, and obviously we have much to learn. I also attended CSWN and the Hospital Board meeting and our seniors board meeting and one more time they're proud to announce that they have 753 members and 50 plus hmm, lifetime members for a total of 803 members so very very pleased with that obviously we must have a few seniors in our town mm -hmm. uh, also we have an AGM on March the 21st all right thanks 
I'll just report on a few things. Uh, I met, as I indicated last time we met here, that I would be meeting with the MLA, uh, Ron Array, letter at her office, uh, just to discuss issues of concern to Comox, give her an update on where we are with our strategic plan, and encouraged her to keep us in the loop on any funding opportunities as uh, previous MLAs have been able to do for us. Of course, the budget was released yesterday, so uh, staff will be looking as that gets rolled out for those kinds of opportunities as they present. Um, met this afternoon with a CBC freelance reporter who's doing a feature on Comox Valley housing and supportive housing issues. So I know she was uh, talking to other mayors as well as the uh, coalition representatives. So there'll be some coverage on that in, coming up in March on the radio show in the afternoon. And as soon as I find out when that is, I'll let you know if you care to listen to some of that. Um, also got to drop the puck, uh, somewhat Olympic related, uh, for a hockey game between a team, a visiting team from Beijing, the Beijing Little Wolves, uh, Kiwi Adam Age, who they were playing a local team here. Uh, and of course, uh, as we all know, the next Winter Olympics is in Beijing 2022, so they're really working hard at developing their hockey pros. And, uh, judging from that game, they're uh, getting pretty good, so we'll see what happens in 2022. Um, so that's uh, my report on uh, council matters. Uh, we do have an uh, opportunity for media or public questions. Any questions of media? Public questions at this time? Okay. So uh, with that, we'll move on. We do have an in-camera meeting, so a motion to exclude the public vote in sections 91B and 92B of the All in favor? Yes, So we'll adjourn while the room closes. <laughs>